What's going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle here with my top 20 tight end rankings for week eight. And not only do I have my top 20 for you, but I have a little bit of tough love as well, Headliner Nation. And we're going to get into that right away. But if you're going to skip through this video or get to different parts, I highly encourage every single one of you to listen to the next five minutes or so of this video because I got a little bit of a lesson. I, I want to just I want to get some real talk out with all of you, okay? And this is what I want to talk about. The first two players on my list here at number twenty and number nineteen, Richard Rogers and T.J. Hawkinson, okay? In my tight end start sit video, from quite a few people actually, a lot, and it caught me off guard. Bro, T.J. Hawkinson, he's a must start. What do you mean? What do you mean, T.J. Hawkinson's inconsistent? Richard Rodgers, bro, you've got him listed as a sit. Ugh. Headliner Nation. Let's talk about something here in 2020. Okay, this has been a crazy year. This has been a year that anything can happen, and lots have gone wrong. Okay, the main thing that you can do to help your fantasy teams win is to try and reduce the amount of potential negative outcome in your lineup every single week. Okay, Let's start with Richard Rodgers. A lot of you think he's a must-play this week. If Richard Rodgers is a must-play for you in your lineup this week, I feel bad for your team. What in the hell have you been doing all season at the tight end position? Don't t- And don't come with the excuse, oh, I've got injuries. If you've had injuries, but you've been listening to this channel, you would have picked up guys way earlier than this, like a Robert Tanyan or a Johnny Smith, okay? Or Gerald Everett even, a Trey Burton. How many tight ends do I talk about? And some of you out here are telling me Richard Rodgers is a must start? I feel awful for your team. Richard Rodgers, okay, has one reception and one target over the last two years in eight games. Ba- dating, uh, dating back to 2017, he has 12 receptions. Richard Rodgers, the only reason he got any playing time last week is because, again, Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard hurt. And if you've been paying attention to the news, Dallas Goddard has a chance to be back this week. He's practiced the last three days. And he's looked good. All reports out of camp is that he looks better. Not camp, but practice. Is that he looks better. He looks good to go. So Richard Rodgers is a smash because why? He had six receptions on eight targets for 85 yards. So? Dallas Goddard has been hurt this year. And Richard Rodgers hasn't done anything. The only reason he got playing time is because he was the only uh, tight end available. And not only that, you've got Jalen Rager coming back this week, okay? Here's the thing about Richard Rodgers. The dude isn't that good. You can, And some of you tried to argue back to his Green Bay days. His Green Bay days, you mean back when he had one year where he had 510 yards and eight, tar- and eight touchdowns? Or are you talking about the other years where he had 225, 271, and 106 yards? Richard Rodgers is not a must start. If Richard Rodgers is a must start for you, feel free, okay? But they've got players back this week. And even if you go 8 6 85, which is probably his ceiling, that's not good enough for me. Okay? That's not good enough for me. You play that Richard Rodgers if you want to. TJ Hawkinson, some of you are trying to tell me TJ Hawkinson is a must start. Some of you are trying to call me out because I said TJ Hawkinson was inconsistent. Do any of you even look at the stats? Here's the thing. That's the problem is some of you do look at the stats, but you spend your entire time looking at box scores. Do you think I care that TJ Hawkinson went six targets, five receptions for 59 yards and a touchdown last week? You know why I don't care about that? Because let's just keep in mind on the final play of the game, TJ Hawkinson caught an 11-yard touchdown pass from Matthew Stafford. So going into that play, the final play of the game, TJ Hawkinson had four receptions for 48 yards and no touchdowns. 
That's what he had going into that final play. He put together a whopping six half PPR points for you before the final play of the game. And you know who that was against? That was against the Atlanta Falcons. The team giving up over 18 fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. The second most in the NFL. TJ Hawkinson had six half PPR points going into the final play. You know who he gets this week? He gets the Indianapolis Colts who are giving up five points per game to opposing tight ends and have not allowed a touchdown to a tight end all season long. TJ Hawkinson is a top 10 tight end right now because he has four touchdowns in six games. That's why. It's not because he's consistent. The Lions don't utilize him. Not nearly as much as they should for a top 10 pick. That's ridiculous. So if he's a must start for you this week against the Indianapolis Colts, I feel bad for your fantasy team. Because the two weeks prior, the dude against Jacksonville had two catches for 17 yards. The week before that, he had two catches for for nine yards going up against the New Orleans Saints who give up the most fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. And he had two catches for nine yards and a touchdown in a game in which Detroit battled back and forth with New Orleans the entire time. TJ Hawkinson is not a must start any single week because in the two games that he played, against the top two worst tight end defenses in the league this year, the dude didn't even come close to touching the amount of points they typically give up in a game. TJ Hawkinson is not a must start. If you want to start him against Indianapolis this week, go ahead. And Headliner Nation, I'll be the first one to tell you I could be wrong. There is a 50% chance I'm going to be wrong about both of these guys this week. And I will always own that. But we talk about this every single offseason. You cannot just look at the box score and make your decisions on what you see there. You also can't just look at what happened the week prior and make your decisions based off what you saw there. That's why we're here. We're giving you in-depth information and knowledge to help you make these decisions. And you come at me with Richard Rodgers had six catches for 84 yards last week. Okay, what has he done other than that? What about Dallas Goddard being back? You can't sit TJ Hawkinson. He's a top 10 tight end. He averages 10 fantasy points a game. Bro, look at how garbage he's been all year. If you're just looking at where he ranks as a tight end, you're not looking at the fact that the only reason he ranks there is because he's getting lucky in the end zone. TJ Hawkinson's a fine player. I like TJ Hawkinson. Detroit's a bunch of idiots. That's the problem with TJ Hawkinson. If he's a must start for you, I feel bad. Okay? Because he's not a must start any week. He's already shown us in the two matchups that should be the best for him this season. He barely scooted in as a startable player. That's my soapbox, Headliner Nation. Okay? I ask you all to do this. Okay? Keep an eye on those things. Don't just look at those top-level stats and let those make the decision for you. Are you going to get lucky every once in a while? Yeah, absolutely you'll be right. But you know one thing that's not going to happen? You're not going to be consistently right. And if there's one thing I can say, I feel like I'm right a lot more than I am wrong. Some of you like to let me know when I'm wrong much more than when I'm right, and that's fine. Because the reason we have 110,000 subscribers is because we are right more than we are wrong. Okay? But just keep that in mind. Okay, we're not making split-second decisions based on a few numbers. When Jake and I do our research, we are digging deep. And we are making the best possible decisions based on that data. So that's number 20 and number 19 for you. Dallas Goddard, I've got up at 14. As of right now, he is expected back. He did not have a setback today in practice. He And if he does not have a setback on Saturday... Reports currently through Yahoo just a few hours ago, he will play. We'll see what happens. I believe him and Richard Rodgers will split snaps. But if you were banking on starting Richard Rodgers this week and Dallas Goddard plays, you're screwed. Okay? Because Goddard's going to be out there. Goddard, I've got at number 14. 
Because if he's healthy, he's going to be targeted. And he's a much better player than what Richard Rodgers is. At number 18, Trey Burton. I'm going back to Trey Burton this week. I, I do like him. I have him listed as a start. Um, I ended up, I will say this, when I submitted my rankings, I accidentally had Hayden Hurst a spot above him. But I don't want to lie to you all, okay? My rankings had Hayden Hurst at 17. It shouldn't have. it. Should, he should have been at 18 because uh, I did not have him playing this week. Trey Burton was supposed to be at 17. He's at 18 right now. Uh, again, going up against Detroit, Detroit doesn't ho- allow a whole lot of fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends either. Um, but Trey Burton is a focal point in that offense right now. And there's nobody at wide receiver that's really excelling. It's, Trey Burton's a guy that definitely has a chance to find the end zone this week. And talked about Hayden Hurst already at 17. He's played number 16, Dalton Schultz. I'd like to have him a little bit higher. I think the uh, I think the matchup warrants it going up against Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia, you know, they're right in the middle of the pack in terms of fantasy points per game uh, to opposing tight ends. But, or excuse me, they're, they're a little bit higher than that. I'm sorry. They give up over 17 fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. So I'd like to go higher with Dalton Schultz. But again, what are we expecting at the quarterback position? I've got him listed as a start. Just keep an eye, keep an eye on that, uh, that low ceiling this week. Mike Gusecki at number 15. He could really be the perfect target for Tua here in his first career start. And I mentioned it in the wide receiver video with the wide receivers. I don't really have any of them as a start this week. But I have Gusecki listed as a start because I think what Miami's going to do in Tua's first start is they're going to set him up for some high percentage completions. They're going to put him in a situation in which they're getting guys open on those intermediate routes or those short routes, especially at the beginning of the game. You know, get him in a groove. Get him feeling good about himself. Get a few completions, all those good things. I think that's what we're going to see. And Mike Gusecki would be a big part of that. Number 14, Dallas Goddard. Already talked about him going up against Dallas. Dallas allowing right around 14 fantasy points per game. They're about middle of the road in terms of tight end defense this year, uh, which is surprising considering the defense hasn't been that good overall. But I'm going to have him right here. If he plays, he's much better than Richard Rodgers. Now, if Dallas Goddard is out, Richard Rodgers is going to bump for me, but he's not going to bump that high because, again, I'm not... I'm not jumping on the Richard Rodgers bandwagon, especially with a Jalen Rashard being, or Jalen Rashard, Jalen Rager being back this week. With Rager back this week, that is a big boost to the offensive weapons there. At number 13, Gerald Everett. As of right now, Tyler Higby is still limited in practice. Last week, I let you all know when Tyler Higby went out, or when Tyler Higby went out, Gerald Everett became a start for me right there. The Rams are going up against Miami, and Miami does allow the third fewest fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends. I'm still going to roll with Everett, though, because I like the touchdown upside. That's where that comes into play, as I like him in the red zone. He's definitely a guy that they have looked towards his direction a little bit more than the wide receivers when they get down there. And with Tyler Higbee being out, that's good news for Gerald Everett. Harrison Bryant at number 12. The dude comes out last week, scores a couple of touchdowns. He's gonna have he's gonna have that ability again this week. Coming in at number twelve, and I would like to go a little bit higher with him there as well. Cleveland going up against Las Vegas. Las Vegas pretty decent against the tight end this year, right around twelve fantasy points per game. But Harrison Bryant clearly the number one option over David Njoku last week. And here's the thing: Harrison Bryant, you know, targeting him. That offense was that offense was flowing after OBJ went out last week. And nothing against OBJ. I love OBJ, okay, but Harrison Bryant is definitely a guy that could help transform that offense uh, and give Baker Mayfield just another weapon to beat teams with. Robert Tanyan at number 11, what what a fall from grace. What a fall from grace. I mean, this was a guy uh, on Monday Night Football a few weeks ago, saved a bunch of people, and we were all over him that week. We loved Robert Tanyan that week, but now that Devontae Adams is back, Robert Tanyan has very little upside, okay? Decent floor. He's going to probably get you at least eight fantasy points because he's he's basically that number two option, especially since Aaron Jones might be out again this week. So Robert Tanyan is another guy that, even though the ceiling might not be there in terms of touchdowns because Adams could absolutely shred Minnesota this week, you still got to have him up here in this area because if he scores a touchdown, he's absolutely a top 12 tight end. It's just finding the end zone that might be a little bit difficult. But the number two option for Aaron Rodgers is a lot better than a lot of people's top option. 
And number 10, Noah Fant. Noah Fant coming back this week. Hopefully he's looking healthy, okay? Last week, noticing during that game, came off the field a little bit more than what you would like to see. Now, I think another week in the books, feeling a little bit better, that gives them the opportunity to get out there, going up against a Chargers defense that gives up just about 14 fantasy points per game. And I also don't love this matchup for the wide receivers either. The Chargers defense gives up just under 35 fantasy points per game. They're right around the 10th fewest in the league. So Noah Fant for Drew Locke could be a huge weapon this week that will really be needed in order for them to move the football and have a chance to win this game. Jared Cook at number nine, again, going up against Chicago this week. The Michael Thomas, he's out again, okay? He, he's going to be done. And a lot of the other players there, okay? Uh, Marquez Callaway's banged up. Emmanuel Sanders hasn't come off the COVID list yet. Jared Cook at number nine for me right now. And I will be honest, I will be honest. This was when I was assuming Michael Thomas was going to be playing. However, I got everything done, ready to go started recording, and that's when the Michael Thomas news broke, okay? So, yes, instead of going back and trying to redo everything for you since we're on a little bit of a time crunch and I got to get this information out to you, Jared Cook, for me, is probably going up to number eight above uh, Hunter Henry now and may even scoot to number seven above Rob Gronkowski. Um I'm going to continue to monitor that and take a look at that as well. Uh, But Robert Kronkowski, I mean, that connection with Tom Brady has been so good the last couple of weeks that I really don't want to move him down any further. But we've got some good options this week. You know, Hunter Henry, yes, okay, the upside with Hunter Henry hasn't been there so far this year. I will acknowledge that 100%. And last week, it was even uh, it was even a little bit of a kick to the growing for those Hunter Henry overs because we those Hunter Henry owners because we saw two other tight ends score touchdowns. But let's take a look at the target so far this year: eight, eight, seven. Then we have a game with only four targets, and then eight and seven. The volume has been there for Hunter Henry all season long. Also, take a look at the yards per reception over the first four games of the year. 14.6, 13.83, 10, 19.5. All of a sudden, over the last couple of weeks, Hunter Henry, Hunter Henry and Justin Herbert just quite aren't there in terms of being on the same page. Uh, and not only that, but the yards per reception have gone down a little bit, or quite a bit as well, actually, too. 5.5 or 5.75 two weeks ago and 7.67 last week. So again, the volume is there. The targets are there. He's looking his way. They're just not quite on the same page. Oh, it's going to get there though. Okay. I I have no doubt before the end of the season that Hunter Henry is going to get there and he's going to be a guy that we can finally say, whew, I'm glad to put him in my lineup every single week. Again, Rob Gronkowski at number seven. He has just been on fire recently with uh, Tom Brady. They're looking, they are looking like the connection of old when they were together. Over the last couple of weeks, you know, back to back games with touchdowns, eight targets each of the last two games, five receptions each of the last two games, 78 yards two weeks ago, 62 yards the week after that. His yards per reception are up to 15 and 12, so he's getting those big plays as well. Rob Gronkowski and Tom Brady, they're there. And no Chris Godwin either only helps right now. Now, when Chris Godwin is back, when Antonio Brown gets on the field, we're going to have to cool it on Rob Gronkowski just a little bit because we got to be careful and see how that offense is going to shape out. But this week, they are going up against the New York Giants. New York Giants, they've only allowed about nine fantasy points per game to opposing tight ends, so they've done a pretty good job of stopping it. But if Rob Gronkowski is healthy and on, there's not a whole lot of people that can stop it. Number six, Jimmy Graham. He's going to be getting the New Orleans Saints, who have allowed, as I previously said, almost 19 fantasy points per game to opposing wide rece- or opposing tight ends. They've allowed six touchdowns to opposing tight ends this year as well. The New Orleans Saints are also... okay. They're allowing a lot, all right? But they're also not going to have to look across the field at Allen Robinson this week. Allen Robinson, doubtful, does not look like he's going to play. Jimmy Graham being the target monster that he has the last couple of weeks absolutely could see him smash, smash against the New Orleans Saints this week. 
So far on the season here in 2020, he has 42 targets on this team on pace to break what he has saw the last uh, year or two. And then those yards, we got to let those, those are starting to bump up a little bit as well. It was a slow start to the season, slow start to the season. We went with 25, 18, and then we got to 16. We've consistently been in that 30 range, 33, 33, 34, 31. But with Jimmy Graham, again, he's getting a ton of targets, 7, 1, and then 10, 5, 5, 8, and 6. Okay, the tight end position is such a wasteland every single week that if you don't have one of the top guys, you got to roll with uh, you know a guy like Jimmy Graham who has some decent upside every single week and is seeing a ton of volume because that raises the ceiling as well. Mark Andrews at number five. Y'all can't come into the comments and complain about Mark Andrews being inconsistent and touchdown dependent and then tell me that TJ Hawkinson is a guy that we got to start every single week, okay? Mark Andrews, yeah. A little bit inconsistent. He's going to be a little bit boomer bust, but he's the number one target for Lamar Jackson. He's still seeing a decent amount of volume this year. Yeah, the yards haven't quite been there as we would like. You know, this week going up against a Pittsburgh team that is is a little bit more tough on tight ends. But also keep in mind, no more Devin Bush. Devin Bush is an athletic freak who can drop into coverage. And that's what they would do sometime with Devin Bush. Yes, he rushes a lot. Yes, he stays in the box a lot. But he's so athletic, he can drop back into coverage. And he takes away those intermediate pass routes for a lot of tight ends because of where he's at and how athletically gifted he is to get on top of those guys very quickly. Okay, So Mark Andrews is going to benefit from no Devin Bush this week. Uh, number four, Jonu Smith. A lot of questions about, should I play John U. Smith this week? I Tons after the start and sit video. And a lot of them included Richard Rodgers. Do not start Richard Rodgers over John U. Smith this week. John U. Smith gets the Cincinnati Bengals, who give up 18.59 fantasy points per game, the third most in the league right now. Yeah, not the best not the best effort last week, right? Okay, we were excited to get John U. Smith back. He didn't put together that great of a game. And then look at it, okay? Look at the rest of the year, though, okay? He's getting the volume. He's putting together. He's putting together touchdowns. He's getting yardage. He was the number one overall tight end in terms of points per game heading into Week Six. Okay, that's how good he's been this year. Yes, you're starting Janu Smith if you own him. Darren Waller, the volume king at tight end, the only guy that you can expect to see more volume outside of Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. And again, George Kittle at number two, Travis Kelsey at number one. You've got your your tier one. Tight ends there at the top every single week, and they're there again this week. Headliner Nation, that's going to do it. We're done. My top 20 tight ends. A little bit of tough love there at the beginning, but it's okay. I still love all of you. I don't have anything against you. I just want to make you better fantasy players. And when I see those comments sometimes, it's just like, man, I, I can tell that some of you are not listening to us when I see some of those comments. And if you're going to watch the channel and take our advice... Listen to everything. Part of my concern is that some of you will come into these rankings videos, you hit pause, you look at the rankings, you bounce out, and you put together your lineup space on that. Don't do that. Listen to the information. Sit down for 20 minutes and listen to the information that we're giving to you so you can make the best decision for yourself, okay? That's what I want you doing. And that's why when I see some of those comments, it's super frustrating because I can tell a lot of you are not listening to what we're telling you, okay? And that's fine. You don't have to. You don't have to listen to what we're telling you, but but hear it. Bring it in. Take in the knowledge. Soak it. Soak it up. And then if you decide that you don't want to be on board with that, no problems. We're not going to always agree. But Headliner Nation, do me a favor. If you enjoy the content, hit that like button. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Become a part of Headliner Nation today. Stay safe and stay healthy. I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. And, of course, our live show Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We got ourselves a Halloween special this week, ladies and gentlemen. So set your reminders and make sure that you hop in. But I'll see you all at that time. Have a good one.